People that are scared of taking risk, they will usually have that employee mindset. They're not the ones that are going to go out and risk everything for their business idea. And that's totally okay. But if you say you want to be an entrepreneur, if you say you want to build this big empire, you've got to be willing to put yourself out there to do the dang thing and live with the results, whether they're good or bad. Hi friends, it's Kayla Craft here. Today we're gonna talk about failure, the big old F word, failure. So I'm going to share with you a couple stories and they're not just like failures of my own, but I'm also going to share some popular failure stories to show you that failure is a part of the process. And by the end of this episode, I hope you know that your mindset is everything. It's the most powerful thing you own is your perspective. And so when you can shift that and look at whatever you're going through right now in your business as an advantage instead of a disadvantage, you can start winning, okay? So I'm gonna share with you a failure story. I wanna say like 2021, okay? So it was just a couple years ago. Chase and I were working with a marriage coach and I had had him on the podcast like a lot as well. And it was just fascinating to me because it was really helping us love each other better. and choose each other again and again and again, instead of just like living in the ick that sometimes marriage could be. Okay. (laughs) Just being honest. So we were going to this marriage coach. I was talking a lot about it on social media and we got so much interest from people like, oh my gosh, like I want to, I want to have this relationship with my husband. Oh my gosh. Like I need help with this. Like my husband needs this. Da, 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 da. And I was talking to my marriage coach and I was like, what would it look like if we did a program together? Like, that would be awesome. Like I have the audience of all these women that need to have better marriages and you don't have a course. Like what if we created one and we were going to do like a retreat and everything. So we planned it out and I would say we didn't plan it out with excellence, but that's like hindsight 2020. Like we just really, I really thought like a ton of people were going to invest in this and we were going to help a ton of marriages. Like I had a lot of hope that it was going to go amazing. Okay. So we did this live class and we had hundreds of people register for the class. And we had a lot of people actually show up for the class where we're teaching some tips on marriage. I can't remember now what we taught. And then at the end, we offered the 12 week course that came with a retreat. Okay. So we did it. And I thought, oh my gosh, for sure. We're going to get like 50 people at least to sign up. And it was crickets, crickets, crickets. We had one person sign up and we ended up having to refund them their money. And I ended up just like helping them out one-on-one because I felt bad. I was like, well, I don't want to just like leave you guys in the dust. You guys were the ones that wanted to invest in yourself. So I like coached them one-on-one chase and I both did actually. And the reason we had to refund the money was because like the retreat costs a lot of money. Like one person signing up wasn't going to even pay for that. And so it was like, okay, this was a complete failure. Like, let's just call it what it is. It was a failure. It did not work. And I was embarrassed because this was like, I, you know, talked up my whole brand and, you know, my business coach, I don't know, my marriage coach saw it. Right. He was like, oh my gosh, this is going to be amazing. And then it was like completely fell flat. And I was embarrassed. I was annoyed that we had put work into it and it didn't turn out well. I also got mad too, because I was like, gosh, like all of you guys asked for this. And then we created this awesome thing and you didn't buy it. You know, and I was like mad. I was going through all these like stages of grief and it was crazy. And I wanted to share with you how I turned my mindset around and learned from this. And I feel like I'm better for it today. This isn't the only failure I've had in the last couple of years, but it was the one that I feel like could be like the most relatable to a lot of you entrepreneurs. Well, you're excited about something. You think people are going to buy and then no one does. And sometimes when one person buys, it's a win. Okay. I'm not putting that down, but for us, like just because of the overhead with this retreat, like 
you know, if you're putting on a retreat, it doesn't work with one person. (laughs) You got to have more people. So failure is not avoidable. I want you to write that down. Failure is not avoidable. It's a part of the process. They say that 3.8 failures are necessary to have one successful venture in your business. And I think that's just like on average, I feel like I've had like hundreds of failures inside of my business, but I want you to understand that every time you fail, you learn something. Failure is actually what makes you into a true entrepreneur because you're like, well, I found a hundred ways that don't work, but here's what does work. Failure is adversity. And what happens when you have adversity in your life? There's the creation of character. In the Bible, they talk about that's the refiner's fire. All your impurities start to go away because when you fail, when you are exposed to adversity, your true character shows. You find out what you're made of. And look, what happened to me? I had this failure and I went totally into victim mode. I'm like, why me? Like what? Like, uh, uh, uh. like I was annoyed and it showed like, okay, we have some, like you need to go on the potter's like hands and get like reformed here because you are not a victim. You chose to do this and you have nobody to be mad at here. Just take responsibility, you know? But I got to work on that part of me and go, gosh, why is the victim mindset still coming up, Kayla? And there was a lot of work I had to do around getting rid of freaking entitlement. You're not entitled to success. Just because somebody said that they wanted something and then you gave it to them, doesn't mean that they're going to buy it and you're not entitled to them buying it. And I had to rework everything around what it means to be an empowered person in business. And was it painful? Absolutely. Because you see parts of yourself that you don't really necessarily like, like to own. You're going, Oh gosh, I do that. Ooh, this brings me to the next step when it comes to failure. When you start to accept responsibility for the failure and you don't blame it on anybody else, you just say, okay, when you accept responsibility, that's when you get to learn and you go, okay, what could I have done better? What did I learn from this process? And when I went and started to dissect it, it was like, okay, there was no ramp up to this. Yes. I had a couple of people like want it. Okay. Like 10 people, let's be real. There was like 10 people who wanted it. And there was no like progression of teaching people why they absolutely had to have this course and why this was the only thing that they needed in their life. And that's part of marketing. So we did a really bad job at presenting that to them of of why they absolutely could not live without this course and without this retreat. And so we learned from the marketing efforts that we did a bad job. The pitch was off inside of the class that we gave, we gave way too much value. And I'm not saying way too much value, but way too much information. And when people have too much information, they already feel paralyzed. So they're like, wow, like I got all this for free, this information for free. I need to work on this because I feel like I'm so far away from what they're going to teach in the course. So I'm going to do this first. And then hopefully they offer this again. And that's what basically happened. Like people were asking later on about it. But then I decided, I was like, well, the whole reason I did this wasn't because I had a passion for helping marriages. I actually never wanted to be in that business. I did want to help people, but I was like, oh, I want to like give them what the people asked for, you know? And I was like doing it for the wrong reason. Like just because somebody asks you for ice cream doesn't mean that you should open up an ice cream shop when you know nothing about ice cream. Right. So that's where there was like the wrong intentions behind it. And obviously it didn't work out. And I'm glad now that it didn't work out. Failure is fertilizer. Write that down. Failure is fertilizer. Everything you learn as an entrepreneur comes from mistakes. What if we got on that call and all 200 people purchased? Well, I would have thought everything I did was magnificent. I would have thought my marketing efforts were amazing. And, you know, I wouldn't have dissected it and said, what could I have done better? I would have been like, oh man, we hit this out of the park. And I would have just like been exciting. It would have been so fun. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Okay. You learn more from your failures. And what I mean by failure is like fertilizer is what happens with fertilizer. 
things grow from it. That's when newness grows. That's when you plant a seed and you start to see blossoms come from that. So new growth happened. And what I realized was not necessarily that I wanted to start like a whole marriage coaching business, but what I realized was that, okay, I really need to keep the main thing, the main thing. And what is it that I help people do? I help women make money, period. So stick to your niche. Help people do what only you can do. And that really helped me just like get even more and more focused. Herbert Brock now said, the fellow who never makes a mistake takes orders from one who does. You've got to be willing to make mistakes. People that are scared of taking risk, they really take that safe path in life. There's nothing wrong with those people, right? But they will usually have that employee mindset. They're not the ones that are going to go out and risk everything for their business idea and risk everything for that investment. They're just not going to do it. And that's totally okay. But if you say you want to be an entrepreneur, if you say you want to build this big empire, you've got to be willing to put yourself out there to do the dang thing imperfectly and live with the results, whether they're good or bad. This is one thing I've learned about making mistakes and having failures in your business. Mistakes aren't permanent markers. They're not permanent markers. They're not going to be this way forever. Everything is temporary. This too shall pass. I say with success, this too shall pass. And with failure, this too shall pass because you're living from one failure to the next success, one success to the next failure. Because if you're not challenging yourself, if you're just staying in your comfort zone, you're really not growing and seeing what you're capable of. Average people are very scared of mistakes. So they live their life walking on eggshells. Average people don't make mistakes and that's what separates them from successful people. That's what separates them from the 1%. Every 1%er is willing to take risk and know that 100% of the time, they're not going to knock it out of the park. But if you just knock it out of the park 10% of the time, that's considered success. And that could absolutely dramatically change your life. It's all in your perspective. Just because you failed at something, this is what I had to understand. Just because this course failed doesn't mean that I'm a failure. I was taking it personally. I felt bad that I had gotten Stefano's in this and he'd put in so much work. And then I'm like, we didn't make any money. You know, I felt bad. I was like, gosh, he's not going to like me. Like I wasted his time, like all of this stuff. And I learned that he learned so much from the process too. He was like, just to see how you guys set up everything. I learned so much. And I was like, okay, like everything can be a win, even when it doesn't go as planned. Write that down. Just because you failed doesn't mean you are a failure. And this is really how I moved through this. I acknowledge the pain of failing. It's really hard to sit there and face the pain that you're in. And this comes with anything. You know, you failed at a friendship. You failed at a business decision. You failed at a goal that you set for yourself. You said you weren't going to drink and you drank. You drank. <laughs> you drank. Oh my gosh. You know, acknowledge the pain. That sucks. Wow. I didn't do what I said I was going to do. It really sucks. And feel it. Let the emotion come out. If there's crying, if there's anger, yell it out. Get rid of it. Grieve the perceived loss. So in that certain situation, the loss was like, wow, like I thought I was going to have this awesome like little new partnership. And now that's not going to happen it doesn't make sense because nobody was making any money. So I had, to pers- I had to, you know, even though I never had it in my mind, I had already had it. Right. And I was excited about this in the future. And I had to like, let that go. I had to go oh, Like I had to mourn it and say, bye, bye to that little dream for now. Okay. I had to forgive the people involved. Like, honestly, I was mad that these people said they wanted it. I created it and they didn't buy it. I forgive them. Forgive them. Like it was so petty. Like, honestly, that I was mad right? And then that brings me to the next step. I had to forgive myself for being mad that I was mad. (laughs) You know, it's like, oh my gosh, the shame cycle that happens. Forgive others involved in in the failure, forgive yourself, and then let it go. Give it to God. 
This is where your relationship with God can come in because he wants you to cast your burdens on him and say, okay, you know, I can't carry this anymore. I'm going to give it to you, Lord, because that you ask me to. Faith without action is dead. So the last step I want you to take when it comes to perceived failure is go and take action. Let it go, give it to God, and then go take action. What's the next best step I can take? And in this certain scenario, I go, well, the next best step I could take is going and launching a course that I know people want from me, that my audience is primed for. And it was called Rewired for Business. I'm known for making money, making money in your business, creating more sales. So I'm just going to get back to what I know how to do. And we did that, had a six figure launch, helped a lot of people, did a retreat from that. And it was amazing. So you're always just a perspective away from a win after you've had a failure. All you need to do is go through this process, right? See the pain that you feel, grieve the perceived loss, Forgive anybody involved. Even if they didn't do anything wrong, you still might have bitterness towards people and you just got to forgive it and let it go. Like you cannot have roots of bitterness in your heart. It blocks you from your blessings. I cannot stress that enough. Forgive yourself because the most often what I see with entrepreneurs that I coach is we're not mad at other people for our lack of success we're mad at ourselves. And I see a lot of self-criticism, self-hate with entrepreneurs. Got to forgive yourself. Let it go. Because that's right. What the enemy does is he plays that evil scheme of getting you to condemn yourself. So then you don't take action because you don't believe you're worthy of success because you've done too much wrong. And I want you to know right now, that's an absolute lie from the pit of hell. You were redeemed and God will restore everything that you've lost while you've been in this pit. It's time to let it go. Give it to God. Go take action on your dreams. If you feel like you just, you keep ruminating on it, keep ruminating on it. You've got to go to your prayer room and you've got to ask people to pray for you. Go to church. Most churches I've been to, I go all over the place to churches. There's always people like, Hey, if you need prayer, go to this room, go to this room, be the person, raise your hand up and go, yeah, I need prayer because I can't get over something. Have somebody, there is so much power with somebody praying over you, let them lay hands on you and be delivered from that stronghold because that's all that it is. If you are overthinking thing, it's a stronghold. It's a spiritual scheme against your destiny. I hope this episode was awesome for you. I hope you go out there and actually take action, get back up again, again and again and again. You might fail today. You might fail tomorrow, but guess what? The sun rises the next day and you got another opportunity to go at it again. And that's the type of mindset you want to have because that's what winners do. That's what champions do. They know it's not, it's not, uh, the one failure that defines you. I remember I was working as a nurse and I was taking care of a patient that I was like completely bed bound and they had the TV on. And so of course I'm like giving a bath, but I'm watching the TV too. (laughs) <laughs> and such a great nurse, right? They announced that Tiger Woods had like, you know, had his drunk driving accident. And, you know, I remember thinking and looking at the TV and going, oh my gosh, he's done. He's done. This huge celebrity, this top golfer, this mentor to all these boys worldwide, he will never be seen in a good light again. I remember thinking that. Like, who are you, Kayla Craft? My gosh. Okay, I wasn't even Kayla Craft at that point. I think I was Kayla Angeles at that point. And, you know, it's like, oh, judgy, McJudgerson over here. And look, Tiger Woods totally made a comeback. He has gone on and done some great things since then. He's completely changed his image. Was that a failure? Absolutely. It absolutely was. But he said, I'm not going to give up. He didn't go and spiral downhill after that. He goes, okay, I'm going to pick my head back up and try again tomorrow. And look what he's done. So, you know, if people can come back from that much of a public humiliation, can you imagine? You can come back from anything, sister. So go out there, take action. I love you so much.